Hi, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Hack, and in this podcast, we'll be reviewing the venules and veins. Venules are microscopic, thin walled vessels that drain blood out of the capillary beds and direct blood into larger veins that carry blood back to the heart. The venules all have thin walls that can distend and expand with blood giving them the ability to act as a blood reservoir and store large blood volumes for the body's circulation. Postcapillary venules are the smallest of the venules and drain blood directly from the capillary bed. They are very porous with a weak endothelium and basement membrane and, like the capillaries, are part of the microcirculation and serve as major areas of nutrient and waste exchange with the interstitial fluid as well as emigration of the white blood cells out of the vessel. The postcapillary venules increase in wall thickness as they leave the capillary bed and gain one or two layers of smooth muscle cells. These venules are called the muscular venules and they have thicker walls that no longer function in exchange activities. They serve to carry blood into the larger diameter veins. Veins are vessels with thin walls. Even though some can have large diameters, up to several centimeters, like the superior and inferior vena cavae, veins have the same three layers as the arteries, but their layers have different thicknesses relative to the diameter of the vessel. Veins have a thinner tunica interna and tunica media with few smooth muscle cells and elastic fibers. They also don't have either the internal or external elastic laminae. The thickest layer in the veins is the tunica externa, which is made of collagen and elastic fibers. Veins cannot endure high pressures, but can distend to accommodate larger volumes of blood and changes in pressure. Unlike arteries, veins rely on the pressure from the heart's contraction and surrounding skeletal muscles to propel blood through them. Blood moving through veins is at a lower pressure than arterial blood. A big structural difference between arteries and veins is that veins have valves, particularly the veins in the arms and legs, which are thin flaps of tunica interna that extend into the vein's lumen. Because blood is flowing through veins at a lower pressure, venous blood can slow down or back up, but prevented from flowing backwards because of the valves which ensure a one-way flow to the heart. Veins without any smooth muscle and having a very thin wall are called the venous or vascular sinuses. These vessels are surrounded by dense connective tissue which gives the veins their support. Examples of these venous sinuses are the coronary sinus of the heart in the coronary circulation and the superior sagittal sinus as shown in the illustration and along with other sinuses of the head that drain deoxygenated blood from the brain to the heart. Besides their structural differences, veins differ from arteries in other ways. Veins are more abundant than arteries. This is because some veins are paired up together alongside arteries, especially in the arms and legs. These double sets of veins are called the anastomotic veins and are connected to each other through channels that give the veins a ladder-like appearance. There are also many veins in the subcutaneous layer under the dermis of the skin. These are called the superficial veins and move through the sub-Q adipose tissue. The superficial veins also connect and form anastomoses with deep veins that are located in between the skeletal muscles. 
The deep veins drain most of the blood in the lower part of a limb, while the superficial veins drain most of the blood from the upper part of a limb back to the heart. At any given time during rest, about 64% of the blood volume is found within the systemic veins and venules. In contrast, only 13% of the blood volume is in the systemic arteries and arterioles, 9% in the pulmonary arteries and veins, 7% in the systemic capillaries, and 7% in the heart's chambers. The systemic veins and venules act as blood reservoirs because of their large blood storage capacity and can direct blood to other areas of the body when needed. Veins of the skin and veins of the abdominal organs, such as the liver and spleen, are major blood reservoirs. An example of an activity that demands more blood redirection is exercise, where more blood is needed by the skeletal muscles. During exercise, the veins constrict in the process of venoconstriction, which decreases their diameter and lowers the amount of blood in the blood reservoir, allowing more blood to flow back to the heart and the skeletal muscles. Another example is during hemorrhage, which involves a decrease in blood pressure and blood volume. During hemorrhage, venoconstriction helps to increase blood pressure by decreasing the diameter of the vein, 